Okay, so it's now time to talk about sort of how cloud computing came about, all right? So with virtualization and this concept of elasticity, it definitely got people thinking. Uh, and that was, you know what? We could actually, as a company, host hardware and make that hardware available to people to host uh, resources like virtual machines on our hardware. Now, this isn't a new idea. Uh, let me give you an example, okay? Uh, between my wife and myself, and I have uh, three teenage daughters, and uh, I know no stress in my life whatsoever, right? <laughs> uh, but two of them are driving. They have, they have cars. So I have four cars that we have to deal with, okay? Now, I like to use the analogy of this. Now, when it comes to, if one of those cars breaks down, there's I have a couple of options. One is I could... Um, fix the car myself. So I could actually turn my garage into an auto mechanic shop. I could buy all the tools, get all the skills, learn how to work on cars, and uh, do it myself. Buy a hydraulic lift and, you know, really go at it. Uh, uh, and that could cost a lot of money up front to get all of that and get the skills and all of that, right? And I also have to maintain that garage. I have to maintain the tools and make sure it's clean and make sure everything's organized so that I can do a good job. Uh, and, and everything, have electricity and, and all of that, that that's needed, right? Um, and then I could work on the cars myself. Now, that mentality, that sort of do-it-yourself mentality, is the way that, that we've always done things in IT. We've hosted our own equipment. We've set up our own data centers. We've, we've provided power and, and air conditioning. We had to have skills to manage the hardware uh, in, that, that went with it all, right? So there's a lot that went into that, um, and that was always the mentality. Now... The other mentality is, if my cars break down, I can take it to a company that offers that as a service. Okay, like there's auto mechanic shops, they got the garage, they got the tools, they got the people that have the skills, they can work on the car for me and fix it for a fee. And that is a, that is a concept, that's basically what sort of like you have with cloud computing. Now there's different, different phases of it, but ultimately that's the logic, okay? So companies like Microsoft and Amazon, uh, they have created, they have gone out and they have, they have uh, set up these huge warehouses, huge data centers, full of equipment. Okay, you're talking tons of server blades, CPUs, tons of CPUs, RAM, storage, network bandwidth, uh, and they are offering that as a service. Okay, so let's draw this big cloud here. All right, this is going to be, uh, we'll say, Microsoft's cloud. All right, let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so they have made their own, their, they've got their own equipment, their own data centers, and they're basically going to host equipment for us to use as customers. That's the idea. All right, these data centers are connected to the internet. All right, there are different versions. There's actually government, government equipment and, um, uh, equipment for cons consumer use. There's also uh, the education system can get access to it. There's a lot of uh, different pieces to all of this, right? Okay, so um, I want to introduce you to a couple of acronyms. All right, the first acronym is IAAS. IAAS is Infrastructure as a Service, okay? Infrastructure as a Service is the concept of hosting all the equipment and making that equipment available to consumers, okay? So, for example, they, they will host all the equipment for you. They will maintain it. They will provide power, air conditioner, redundancy. They'll keep the equipment updated. And um, we can host things on their equipment. So you see these virtual machines over here? I can host those in their cloud. So I can host virtual machines, okay? They will also provide other, other resources, virtual appliances. So you're getting into things like uh, virtual load balancers, you're talking about virtual firewalls, okay, they've got virtual storage for, for backing things up, okay, they'll host databases out there for you as a service, there's a lot of things they're going to host out there for you, uh, and the great thing about this is you just pay for what you use, so if you don't use very much, you uh, you're not, you're not going to pay very much. You know, I, I like I I do consulting work. I have one one client that that basically they have a a virtual server running server 2019 and they pay thirty dollars a month, 
and they have a few people that hit it every day. You know, it's not that expensive. Of course, you can get into the higher tiers. Now, the other great thing about it is it's elastic. So if, uh, if, if you got a lot of things going on in that server, then Microsoft can give you more CPU, more memory, more storage, more network. Of course, you're going to pay for that, right? Now, their cloud is called, their IaaS cloud is called Azure. Okay, by the way, that's how I pronounce that. You may pronounce it different. Azure, 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 uh, Azure. I've heard it pronounced Azure. Um, there's so many different names for it. I actually tried one time to figure out the proper way to say that word. I actually watched the videos of the guys who created Azure. And guess what? They don't say it the same way either. <laughs> they, they call it something different too. So uh, that's how I say that word, okay? Azure. So Azure is their platform for, for dealing with uh, all of these, uh, these virtual, um, the, the hardware basically that you can store virtual things on like VMs and, and appliances. And uh, it's all you're, all, you're basically paying for what you use, how much CPU you use, memory, storage, network, all that. Now, there's another piece to this, okay? And it's called PAAS. And there's SaaS. Some people pronounce it PaaS and SaaS. Now, PaaS is platform as a service. Platform as a service is where they are hosting some kind of a web-based platform, and you have to configure it and set it up the way you want, and and deploy it the way you want, configure it the way you want for your people. All right. And then they're in, and essentially they're they're giving you a platform with the tools to do what you need, but you have to use those tools. And then SaaS, which is software as a service, is basically apps that are being hosted, applications like, for example, you can access Word online and Excel online and PowerPoint online and all that. Now, their, their PAAS and SAAS platform is actually called Microsoft 365. Okay, they used to call it Office 365, but it confused everybody because everybody thinks of like Office, right? You know, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all that, but they now, they changed it to Microsoft 365, and what you'll find is, is that Office 365 is part of that, and that's a, Office 365 is considered a, believe it or not, a platform as a service, because you completely configure it, and you can deploy the apps out, and you can have Office Online, Office on the Web, okay, that is your software as a service, okay, side of things. Okay, now another piece of this that you get is you get things like Exchange Online, okay, so they're going to host the email stuff out there for you, they're going to host SharePoint Online, all right, you have something called OneDrive for Business, that is their storage, and then you have uh, Teams, okay, so they were doing Skype for Business and Skype for Business going away, they, uh, they have Teams, right, Teams is, is wonderful, it's a great collaboration tool and all of that, okay, that you, uh, that you use. And um, so you have that. And then you've also got a product called Intune. Intune is Microsoft's MDM MAM product. So mobile device management, mobile application management. This is their product when it comes to managing all of your devices. The great thing about Intune, you can manage on-premise devices like this. You can manage uh, 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 cloud devices or internet devices that are just connected to the internet like smartphones, tablets, things like that. Uh, even uh, devices that are at people's homes, if, uh, if they allow you to, you can actually manage those too. Uh, Intune is now uh, also part of the Endpoint Manager uh, configuration. So you're going to use a tool called Endpoint Manager to manage Intune. And it is related to Endpoint Configuration Manager. So the thing was is that it confused everybody when Intune came out because it could do a lot of the same things that, uh, that Endpoint could. I'm sorry, that, can, that uh, SCCM could, um, and so it confused everybody. So Microsoft renamed uh, SCCM to Endpoint Config Manager, and Intune is now part of that as well. So you have a web-based portal that uh, allows you to control both things, okay? And so it makes it uh, a whole lot easier because you can, can, you can centrally control everything as opposed to having to, um, you know, jump, jump back and forth. Now, another great thing you get it, with Endpoint Man config managers, you can do this thing called co-management, where you actually link the two together, and it can control Windows 10 devices, whether they're internal or whether they're out on the internet, they can jump back and forth, and if the Windows 10 device is internal, then, it, then Endpoint Config Manager controls it. If the, the Windows 10 device is out on the internet, then Intune will control it, okay? Now, another piece of this that I kind of left for the last 
is a thing called Azure AD. Azure AD is kind of the glue that, that ties these two things together. Your IAAS and your PAAS are all and SAAAS is all tied together with Azure AD. That is your directory service. And it is a completely different directory service than what we had on premise. On premise, they'll use an acronym called ADDS, uh, which is Active Directory Domain Services, if I could actually spell. All right, Active Directory Domain Services. Okay, wow, lots of typos here. Um, <laughs> Okay, so ADDS, Active Directory Domain Services, that is your on-premise Active Directory. Azure AD is completely different. It's developed with web-based uh, um, uh, tool uh, programming. So you're dealing with uh, a lot of your web-based uh, SAML and what's called uh, open ID and open authorization. It, and uh, it's a different language than what LDAP and Kerberos is built, so, built by. Okay. Now you can actually, another thing that's really cool about this is you can actually link the two together and synchronize. So you can actually set up this thing called an Azure AD Connect server, all right? And if you set that Azure AD Connect server up, you can link your on-prem Active Directory with the cloud and they can synchronize users, groups, passwords, all that stuff uh, between the two, all right? And then you can achieve what is called SSO, single sign-on, where somebody on-premise can actually authenticate on-prem as well as on the cloud at the same time. Uh, and But just so you know, you get to decide on all that. This is not forced on you, okay? You get to, to make that decision. And you also get to decide what gets synchronized. So if you don't want all your users synchronizing, nobody says they have to all be synchronized. You get to decide what's gonna get synchronized, okay? All right, so hopefully that gives you guys a, a halfway decent understanding now of just the basic foundations of sort of where things were, where we are, and of course, as you can imagine, the cloud is really where Microsoft is heading in the future, and that's definitely where they're putting all their, their time, effort, and energy. But hopefully that gives you guys a good foundation of how all that works. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again.